These new build plates claim to have better bonding than anything else on the market. They also claim that they bond well when the bed temperature is set far lower, even with no heat at all. So can these build plates finally spell the end of using glue? We need to know exactly how good the bond is and we are going to test that. How much warpage we can expect with each build plate, we're going to test that too. And how good is the bond even after scratching the surface up to simulate a year's worth of wear and tear? We're going to test that as well. So stick around. These two new build plates were made by Bichu and these were sent to me to test out. But Bamboo recently released something that has similar sticky properties called the Super Tack. And after being sold out twice, I was finally able to buy one. So now we have a proper showdown. First is the Bamboo Super Tack. This is a new product and it says to say goodbye to print failures with its reliable surface adhesion, durable coating for long lasting performance. A natural texture seamlessly hides the bottom surface. It is designed for PLA and PETG. Reduces warping when printing large objects. Works well with the surface in a bad condition. Energy savings with a heated bed of 45 degrees Celsius. Not compatible with TPU or PLA silk. Clean with detergent and water only. It is double sided and it has a very tacky surface. Next are the Bichu Frostbite and Bichu Glacier claiming zero heat with a hero hold with their high magnetic spring steel, exceptional adhesion, room temperature printing, energy savings, no more clogging with PLA, easy print removal, coarse and fine textures, and fully compatible with P1, X1 and A1 printers. For the Frostbite, it's compatible with PLA and PETG only, clean with detergent and water only, the Frostbite has a rich blue color and it is double sided with a slightly more textured and slightly glossy surface. And it has a very light tackiness to the surface as well. It can be used with any filament below a 300 degrees Celsius nozzle temperature, water with detergent or alcohol for cleanup. The Glacier is a light blue color with a double sided lightly textured uniform matte finish like the Super Tack has, though it does have a more slick surface to it. It also has a cool grip handle for safe removal of a very hot build plate. Before we get any testing started, build plates have been cleaned with soap and water as recommended. These plates are supposed to have better bonding at low temperatures, but first we need to test them at recommended settings for each build plate with PLA. The SuperTac has a 45 degrees Celsius build plate. It had good adhesion during the print and it broke at a load of 132 grams or 0.29 pounds. We have the Frostbite at 40 degrees Celsius. It has good adhesion during the print and broke at 125 grams or 0.28 pounds. The smooth high temperature plate, which is at 60 degrees Celsius and it has glue stick on it, had good adhesion during the print and broke at 84 grams or 0.185 pounds. The textured PEI has glue stick and 60 degrees Celsius bed temperature. Good adhesion during the print as well. Broke at 81 grams or 0.18 pounds. The Glacier printed at 50 degrees Celsius. It had okay adhesion during the print with a very slight separation towards the closed stringer and broke at 76 grams or 0.17 pounds. Currently the SuperTac is in the lead for the first test, followed closely by the Frostbite with the Glacier coming in last for this test. Next, we'll do the same test, but with no bed heat to see if any of them can actually finish the test. The bed will hover between 26 and 28 degrees Celsius. And because the bed temp isn't generating heat, we can run the prints with the door closed. First up, we have the Frostbite. It was doing well until the end and was able to complete 12 rises on the nowhere stair. Next up is the Glacier. It was going strong for a while and it was able to complete eight and a half rises on the stair. Next is the SuperTac and it kept on going and going and was able to finish the print and since it finished we can also test the bond again and it broke at 125 grams or 0.28 pounds which is very close to the load with the heated bed. Next is the textured PEI with glue stick applied and pre-dried and it was able to reach 10 and a half rises with a pretty solid performance. Last is this smooth high temperature plate with the glue stick pre-dried and it reached a respectable 12 rises. We have the Bamboo SuperTac in first followed by Frostbite and then the smooth high temperature with glue stick 
and the glacier again came in last place. The next test is a warpage test and I've designed this part to warp and to pull away from the build plate more easily than a normal print and that's because of the reverse taper. If it doesn't pull away from the plate, it can also pull up on the plate and away from the magnet below. Warpage can occur during the print or even after the print as it cools completely. The SuperTac came in at 0.02 millimeters of difference, which is a very good result. The Glacier came in slightly better for 0.01 millimeters. The Frostbite tied for first with 0.01 millimeters. The Textured PEI also tied for first with 0.01 millimeters. The Bamboo High Temp with glue stick came away the most, but only on the left side. The right side looked perfect. The high Temp came in last place with 0.14 millimeters, which means that it lifted quite a bit during the print. The next test is the same, except we're going to simulate a year's worth of scratching by sanding each of the three new build plates with 180 grit sandpaper. I will clean them completely and then we'll run the same warpage tests again. The SuperTac came in at 0.01 millimeters this time, slightly better than before. The Glacier came in at 0.00 millimeters, slightly better than before as well, and taking first place. The Frostbite came in at 0.00 millimeters as well, tying for first place. All three produced excellent results and they are so close to having no measurable warpage. The results show that the scratch surface does not impact the bond. It may even slightly improve it. If spring steel is thinner, it can pull away from the magnet more easily, but if the coating is also thicker, it can have the same effect. I'm gonna do a flex test with each of the build plates, but then I'm also gonna measure the overall thickness and we're gonna measure the thickness of the steel and I've already gone ahead and removed the coating from both sides of every build plate to make sure that I'm down to bare metal and that way we can get an accurate measurement. The steel thickness isn't necessarily the only factor here. Sometimes the coatings themselves can help to prevent some of that flex as well, but the steel thickness is a good indicator. The frostbite feels quite stiff. The super tack is is stiff, not quite as stiff as the frostbite. This is about the same as the super tack. This one is about the same as the frostbite. And the glacier seems to be the most stiff of them all. I decided to go a little bit further and measure the actual deflection under load. For the frostbite, 10.61 millimeters. For the Glacier, 11.58. For the Textured PEI, 20.91. For the SuperTac, 20.3. And for the High Temp, 22.99. The Bamboo SuperTac has a thickness of 0.38 millimeters on the steel. 0.49 millimeters overall. Frostbite has a steel thickness of 0.47, an overall thickness of 0.65. Bamboo high temperature plate has a steel thickness of 0.38, an overall thickness of 0.76. The Texture PEI plate has a steel thickness of 0.4 millimeters, overall thickness 0.72. And the Glacier has a steel thickness of 0.46, an overall thickness of 0.63. We had the Frostbite in first place with the least deflection, followed closely by the Glacier, then we had the Bamboo SuperTac, which had quite a bit more deflection, and in last place we had the high temperature build plate. I'm most surprised with the Bamboo SuperTac because it has such a thin piece of steel, but it has a thin coating as well, and that must allow it to get as close to the magnet as possible to prevent it from lifting away from that magnet. One side bonus of a lower bed temp is that there are some energy savings. Using the recommended settings of 45 degrees Celsius for the SuperTac, we have 0.065 kilowatt hours, a reduction of 0.032 kilowatt hours from standard. If you dare to use no bed heat at all, the usage is down to 0.039 kilowatt hours, a reduction of 0.056 kilowatt hours 
from standard. An average 10 hour print at 60 degrees Celsius would cost around 12 cents. At 45 degrees Celsius, we save around 4 cents from standard. With no bed heating, we'd save around 7 cents from standard. It isn't that much, but if you do a lot of printing, it does add up. I wasn't too happy with the bonding torture tests out there already, so I created these. This one is called the Nowhere Stair, and I designed it just like I designed full-scale stairs with closed and open stringers, glue blocks, tread overhangs, and return nosings along with a 10 inch run and a seven and three quarter inch rise height. This model and print profile are available for free in the description below for anyone who wants to try them for themselves. The second print is called the Warplerone and it is simple, but it works. It's also available for free in the description if you'd like to try that one as well. I've been using the Frostbite for over a month now and for PLA and PETG, I haven't needed a glue stick once. I haven't had the SuperTac for nearly as long, but from my testing so far, it seems like another great option. If there are other new build plate materials you'd like to see tested, let me know in the comments down there. And for these comparison videos, I've attempted a more project farm format. So let me know if you're enjoying this format better. The best performer overall is the SuperTac. This product performed exactly how Bamboo said it would, even after aggressively sanding the surface. My only complaint is that this is pretty thin, but it seems to be designed so that it keeps a good hold to the magnet below. It is a little bit more expensive, so for a slightly more affordable option, the Frostbite is also a great choice. It didn't perform quite as well, but it was a very close second. They also make a dark gray option to keep with the look of the printers. These tests weren't exactly fair for the Glacier. The SuperTac and the Frostbite are meant to print PLA and PETG only. The Glacier does everything else. With no adhesive at all, I tested it with PA6 glass fiber, nylon glass fiber, and it performed well with mouse ears. It performed better with ABS and no mouse ears, and it performed fairly well with TPU. Normally, I use glue stick for every single print, and so I go through a lot of glue sticks, which means cleaning the build plates often as well and cleaning the bottoms of the prints off. There is quite a lot of waste to make sure that the glue is applied everywhere as well. And with PLA and PETG, I don't need to even think about glue stick anymore. So that is a big time saver and a money saver as well. With any other materials, the Glacier is a good option, but I'd still recommend a brim or mouse ears if the parts are prone to warpage. I'd also like to see these products made in different sizes for other popular printer brands like Chidi, Prusa, and Creality printers as well. If you like this content and you'd like to keep this channel going strong, you can help by liking the video and subscribing as well. I have a short list in the description of products that I use in my shop on a regular basis as well. And that's another way to help support this channel if you'd like to check them out. Thanks for watching, take care, and we will see you on the next one.